Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to fun. <laughs> Today's session is just pure fun. It's toys <laughs> from wall to wall, but they happen to be toys that are incredibly useful, uh, particularly when you're uh, in a situation where you have to teach through Zoom. Uh, we are going to look today at integrating a piece of software called Open Broadcaster Software Studio, usually just OBS for short, with our Zoom meetings. And we'll see how that goes. We're going to start, um, I'm making no assumptions about prior knowledge of or experience with OBS. And we'll start from scratch and move right along. Let me pull up my PowerPoint here and share my screen with that in Zoom. Usually I can do this with OBS, but there's, <laughs> there's my first PowerPoint slide. Let's start with that. And here we start with Open Broadcaster Software Studio. Did I mention this is free? It's an open source project like Linux, <laughs> you know, which runs <laughs> way more than half the internet or uh, which runs the servers, which run more than half the internet, or uh, huge software packages, um, vital tools. Many of them are free and developed by a, a team of volunteers. And OBS is a notable one of those in the video and uh, broadcasting realm. It is a live video switcher, among other things. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, OBS, as I say, is a program. It's a piece of software that runs on a Mac or a PC, it's, or a Linux computer. It runs especially well on Linux, which tends to be more efficient, make more efficient use of the system, the hardware resources you have in a computer but it works great on Windows or Mac as well. So it's a piece of software sitting here in the center of our diagram. And to this piece of software, to the computer running this piece of software, I can connect various video sources. Anything that can output video. Typically, most of them are cameras. Okay, video cameras. Think video cameras. But it can also be other types of video sources. It can be the video that your computer sends to your computer screen. You can import that. You can connect that into OBS as a video source. So while running OBS, you have all of these different video sources available to you. And you can use OBS to select which one, or where it gets really interesting, which ones, plural, you output from OBS to various destinations. That's what we mean by a video switcher. There's several video sources and you can switch between them live. Now this is something that used to require thousands of dollars worth of hardware to do this in hardware. Like in the, uh, the network trailer at Monday Night Football, they have this video switcher that's bigger than the uh, keyboard on a grand piano, quite a bit bigger. It was bigger than the grand piano. And a guy sits in front of it and pulls up, the, you know, they have 20, 30 cameras going at the same time. He, he picks the ones that you're going to see using the video switcher. That's what OBS does. Indeed, you could probably run Monday Night Football with OBS if you didn't have, you know, a couple million dollars worth of equipment in that trailer. So it, it's phenomenal what it can do and how much money it can save you. Once you select a video source to send out from OBS, you can send it to a live streaming service like YouTube or uh, Twitch if you're a gamer or uh, free Facebook Live. <laughs> That's all right, Kathy. 
<laughs> You'll hear worse today, I'm sure, when I hit the button, so don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> well, I'd have to go back and check the recording for that. <laughs> if, if you're real nice to me, I might go in and take it out before I put it online. Excuse me, uh, Dave, can you have it go right to your um, uh, studio thing on Zoom, on Canvas? Uh, no, not exactly. Okay. Well, yeah, you could if you used your screen recorder in Canvas Studio, but uh, you can record, indeed. You can record that video output from OBS and record it as a video file that just gets dropped on your hard drive. And then you can upload that file to Canvas Studio. You do have to do that in two steps. It won't connect directly to Canvas Studio. Nor will it connect directly to um, the to YouTube's video server. But you can connect directly to YouTube's live streaming service. And that gives you a TV studio and a computer. You can broadcast live out of OBS from your desk or from your office to the world through YouTube streaming or Twitch or Facebook Live and people all over the world can see it. All they need is the URL, the link for the, for the um, stream and you can send that to them. You'll know what that is in advance. So this thing is like I say, think that network trailer at uh, Monday Night Football. It is, it can reach the world. But what we're going to be talking about primarily today is the um, ability of OBS to send its output to Zoom. OBS can show up as a video source in Zoom. And to Zoom, OBS looks like a webcam. So whatever OBS sends to Zoom is what you can send to your students or to your attendees in your meeting. And that's what we're going to focus on today, is using OBS as a video source for Zoom. OK. Uh, let's see, you had a brief question there about Canvas Studio. No, you would not send this to the screen recorder in Canvas Studio. OBS has its own recorder built in. And it will allow you to record whatever OBS uh, sends to Zoom. Or, I'm sorry, whatever OBS outputs, not to Zoom necessarily, but whatever OBS outputs as a video file, which you can then upload to Canvas Studio or to YouTube or to any other hosting service that you might have access to, like Vimeo or whatever. So you can take recordings out of from OBS and share them globally, but you can also do it live. You don't necessarily have to record it, put it online and have people watch it later. You can do both. Can I ask one more question, Dave? Absolutely. So for me, and I think also for some other teachers, I teach uh, basically exercise on Zoom. Ah. And then sometimes I record that for my students to use at another time. Right. So this does not sound like the method I would want to do. Oh, this would work great for that. I would still be teaching on Zoom and recording on Zoom. Yeah, you can do that, certainly. But if okay. you were to make an exercise video that you were not, you know, that was not part of a live Zoom meeting, you could certainly use OBS to do that. Yeah. And you can make the video look like something out of uh, a Jane Fonda tape or whatever. Well, there you uh, go. Cutting. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's all right. I don't look much like... Uh, like Jack LaLanne either, but uh, <laughs> the, um, you can uh, record, I use OBS for screencasting. Uh, you can record instructional videos 
that you are meant to be played back later on demand using OBS, certainly. And you can do it with multiple cameras and you can display multiple scenes at the same time on the same screen. Think, you know, the, uh, think the evening news, the newscaster sitting there and a window up and above, you know, off to the side showing the evening's film and so on, the newscaster commenting on it and bringing in other video and things like that. You can do all of that with OBS. Just things that you see on uh, commercial uh, TV productions and so on can be done through OBS. There's not much that I've seen in the way of video effects and so on that you can't do with OBS. The live video effects that you can't do with OBS. Oh, I had a question too. Yes. Can you hear Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so, you know, all I, because I was doing all these live Zoom lectures and things right. like that. And, right. And I know you got my email because you sent me this link. However, um, all I want to do is like do a PowerPoint, go to and, and get some links, active links that I'm showing them mm -hmm. usually during my lecture. And you could do it on, on Zoom, but then if yes. you go to play it some other time, you've got everybody in the gallery, right? And we don't have yes, do. that. Yeah, so that's gonna, this this is gonna help me this, not do that, this right? If I pre-record yes. it. Yeah, though, if you're doing a Zoom meeting, you're if you're, Using OBS as a source for Zoom, you're still probably going to record using Zoom. There are some settings you can uh, change in Zoom that will minimize what other people can see about the other attendees in the meeting. But uh, how OBS would help you in that regard is that, let's say you wanted to narrate a PowerPoint presentation. Well, that's what I want to do without for this semester. Without, semester, without the other that, folks so I in there. Use it with other classes. Exactly. And you can do that. You wouldn't want to do it in a live session. You just use OBS by itself in that case. Right. And you'd bring up your PowerPoint slides in OBS and you'd bring yourself up maybe in OBS so you could get both mm -hmm. at the same time. And then you would record yourself narrating that PowerPoint presentation. You get a video file that just drops it right on your hard drive. No fuss. And um, you can tell it where to put it for that matter. So you know exactly where that video file ends up. And then you can upload that video file to a hosting service like Canvas Studio or YouTube or Vimeo and get a link for that video and put that link in your Canvas uh, course and your students can watch it. And there's no personally identifying information for your students in there. Okay, so I don't so you know use how it to upload to YouTube. That's another class. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know how to upload to YouTube. That well, if you want to, uh, at the end of these sessions, I always take general questions, so I'd be happy to show you. There's nothing to it. Yeah, I can't stay. Okay, I can't stay for this one, but I will okay, but come back to this. I'm sure you have video. Actually, I have a tutorial online already right. on how to do that. If okay. you'll send me an email, I'll send you the link. Okay. All right. That's great. Um, you, great. And uh, um, I'd be my pleasure. And Adam, I see you have your hand raised. Right. Uh, hi, Dave. Um, always enjoy your presentations. I learned so much. Thank you. Um, could you maybe just very briefly contrast uh, this application with Screencast-O-Matic, uh, which is something I started using based on one of your other presentations? Oh, I'm so glad you're using Screencast-O-Matic. Um, <laughs> Actually, you can do some of the thing, same things with both. I can do screencasting, which is recording my computer screen along with my voiceover. I can do that with uh, Screencast-O-Matic, and I can do that with OBS as well. But Screencast-O-Matic is not a live uh, tool. That is, you, I can't really use Screencast-O-Matic in a live Zoom meeting to enhance my video which is what we're going to see how to do today with OBS. So you can do most anything you can do in uh, Screencast-O-Matic with OBS, and yet you can do a lot more with OBS than you can with Screencast-O-Matic is probably the best way to put that right now. That'll make more sense when you see what OBS is and how it works, I hope.
<laughs> that is my goal anyway. <laughs> we'll see how well I, I, um, I manage that. Thank you. Okay. Yes. All right. Certainly. Um, first thing we're going to learn to do is get OBS and install it and get it ready to set up. Not my really not much to this. See, I need to check something. Yeah, I think I'm ready. Okay. Um, here's the link on this uh, PowerPoint slide here, which I trust you can see. I didn't pop up my other computer today and put it in the meeting, but let me know if I start talking about something you can't see. <laughs> uh, but the uh, website from which you can get OBS is uh, obsproject.com, as you see here. Pretty easy to remember. If I click on that, I'll bring up the OBS Studio website. Um, and all I have to do to get this software is to click on the operating system for the computer that I'm using. Uh, this is a Windows computer, so I'll click Windows. And just that fast, the installer for OBS begins to download. I can choose where to put it. I want to put it in my Downloads folder. It looks like that's where it's planning on putting it. Yeah. And uh, I'll just save it. And OBS, will the installer, will download. Totally free. Nobody asks. They didn't even ask for my email address, which is pretty nice. Usually, at least have to uh, to get something free off the internet, you have to sell your email address so that you end up with mega spam and so on later on. OBS is not like that. This is a very responsible group. So there's the installer down there in the lower left, the little uh, executable file. And to run this program, all I to run this installer, all I do is in, in the case of Chrome here, all I have to do is double click it and the installer proceeds to run. I do have to tell uh, Windows that it's okay for OBS to install. And then I get the little installer dialog here, which is pretty common. Um, and I just take all the defaults. I don't have to think here. I just next, next. Of course, I accept the license. You're not going to let me use it otherwise. And then I get to the point where it says, where the button says install. So I cross my fingers and I click install. And this one doesn't even take very long to install. Now, this is a fairly fast computer, but it's not going to take more than two or three minutes to install on your computer. And that's it. It's done. I now have OBS on this computer. Dave, can I just ask a quick question? It's Absolutely. Always, I'm in my bathroom, so you're not getting my live video. I don't <laughs> <you too much. laughs> I have standards. I'm practicing netiquette. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, my question is, you know, you may remember this, Eileen and I went around the bend with our Macs because this Screencast-O-Matic fought with Canvas Studio. Yes. Um, can you assure us that OBS isn't going to fight with this if we install it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only thing that I've had OBS fight with is uh, Microsoft Teams, of all things. Before oh. it will let me in, before the... Um, my computer will let me install OBS. I have to make sure Microsoft Teams, their, their meeting product, like something like Zoom, is shut down completely on the computer. And that's the only problem I've had. I've had no trouble with it um, in a, fighting with anything while it was running and being used. It was only the installation process. And that just happened for the first time this morning, curiously. I'm not quite sure why it just suddenly started doing that. But yeah, I don't think know, it has major problems. Yeah, good to know because actually I find more and more people uh, use Microsoft. I actually 
do have another work group that uses Microsoft Teams, and I wouldn't want to get shut down. <laughs> uh, well, now you just while you were installing OBS, you'd have to shut Teams down, but then you can bring it back up. And actually, OBS works great with Teams. When I go in our um, online learning pathways staff meetings are held on Teams, right. and I use OBS as my video source in Teams, and it works like a shot. Oh, great. So it's not just Zoom. You can uh, send the output from OBS too. You can actually send OBS output to almost any other software application that accepts video from a webcam. Because to the computer, the output of OBS looks like a webcam. It's a lot more than that, <laughs> but it looks to the operating system and is treated like a webcam. So just about any application that can bring up an image from your webcam can be can it also receive input from OBS. Great question. All right, so uh, I'm done here. I just click finish and I'm just going to leave this box checked that says to launch OBS Studio. Let's run it and take a look at it. Finish. And here's OBS. Oh, I have to, I can't full screen it until I tell it, until I answer a couple of questions for it. Uh, there are three modes, if you will, in which uh, OBS is typically used. Streaming, recording, or a virtual camera mode, which is how it sends uh, video to Zoom and Teams and other uh, applications. Things, you, you're not making an irrevocable decision here. You can always go back and choose to use these uh, OBS and these other modes as well. But I strongly recommend installing it for the first time to select, I will only be using the virtual camera. You can change your mind later if you decide you want to stream and record. It's very easy to set up, but you don't want to have to set it, set all that up right away if your main goal is to feed information to Zoom. In fact, uh, it, this also this setup also works perfectly well for recording. So uh, the only thing you, that requires any significant amount of setup is live streaming directly from within OBS. And that's, it's a lot of people use it for that, but it's not, that's not its primary instructional superpower. It's uh, instructionally, the, uh, the neatest thing OBS can do is feed video to Zoom or Teams and allow you to teach in the virtual classroom provided by those two applications. All right, so I'm gonna pick the easy one here, the third one and click next. It gives me a little bit of information. You might want to check the resolution, uh, screen resolution at which it's going to operate here. You see these, the base and the output screen resolution. Um, you want to make sure it's making good use of your uh, computer. I haven't ever seen it fail to detect the um, screen resolution at which you're running your computer. Uh, properly, but it's worth a look. 1920 by 1080, that's 1920 across, pixels across by 1080 pixels down. Um, the, uh, that is so-called high definition video, also called 1080p, and that's what you want, generally. So that's good. So basically you just say, I just want to use the virtual camera and then you check this resolution to make sure it's not, that is not something strange. And then you click apply settings and that's it. That's all the, the installation configuration there is you have to do. So you can literally install and start configuring um, OBS in three minutes. <laughs> well, depending on how fast your internet connection is and how long it takes to download to your computer, maybe five minutes. And you can be ready to go with OBS, Open Broadcaster Studio. So that's all that we have to do for that PowerPoint slide anyway. And this is OBS. 
let's pull PowerPoint back up here and go to the next slide. Okay, we said that OBS is at heart a video switcher. You put a bunch of video sources into it and then you can use it to pick which one you output to some other destination. That's the, the base functionality of OBS. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the types of video sources that you might connect into OBS. And above all, those are going to be cameras. Most of your video sources are going to be cameras. <coughs> Webcams play great with OBS. Uh, any camera that connects to your computer with a USB cable, like a, here's a, a typical external webcam, a, um, a Logitech C920. Here's a little IPvo document camera. We'll see how that works today as well. It also has a USB cable that comes out and plugs into your computer, into a USB port. The, um, if you have a, a webcam built into your laptop, that will automatically be connected to the laptop. So you don't have to do anything to cause that to work with OBS. It'll work great with OBS as well. So webcams are certainly the, among the more common video sources used by, uh, with OBS. But you can also connect other types of cameras. If you want to get uh, a little fancier, you can type uh, other types of cameras. Oops, there's a T supposed to be there in other. Sorry about that. My mama told me to learn to type. Um, like uh, some of you may have taught recently in classrooms that had a little pan tilt zoom camera, an automatic camera or a controllable camera in the back of the room that you got a little joystick or a, or a software control where you can, you can aim the camera and zoom in and out and so on with it remotely. You can connect that type of camera to OBS. I have one sitting behind me here that's uh, connected into my system. You can use standard camcorders, like you may have a little, little old camcorder left that you filmed your kids with and so on. Um, that you can connect, and those tend to have quite high video quality and good lenses and so on, so you can connect that to OBS, to your computer, and use it in OBS as a video source. Um, most of the, these cameras all have a common, or most all of them have a common type of video output called HDMI. Uh, high, high, whoop. Didn't want to go forward. Uh, high definition media interface, it's called. It's that flat uh, cable connector that connects your DVD player to your TV or your, um, your video box, your Roku, your Apple TV, or whatever to your, to your TV. That's a standard high definition video, digital video interface. And any video source, any camera or DVD player or I've even hooked my Roku box up just to see if it would work <laughs> with OBS and so on, and it did. I, could, I, I even broadcast a, a, few, a couple of seconds of a Netflix movie <laughs> on OBS and then shut it right down, figuring that Netflix could probably find that out. And didn't want the black uh, vans pulling, you know, the black panel vans pulling up in my driveway with lots of husky people getting out with assault rifles and so on, so I decided not to try that again. But any video source that has an HDMI con uh, out connector on it can be uh, connected to your computer and used in OBS as a video source through the uh, intermediacy of what's called an HDMI capture device here, which can be very simple and cheap. That device is about 30 bucks. And it's just got an HDMI connector on one end and a USB connector on the other. You plug your the cable the HDMI cable from your camera into this thing, and then you plug this into your into a USB port on your computer. And Viola, 
um, the uh, that camera then looks to your computer like a webcam and it looks to OBS like a video source that OBS can import and then export uh, upon command so you can use all sorts of video source, all sorts of cameras with OBS but you're not limited to cameras as video sources you can uh, uh, a very commonly used type of video source in OBS is something called a display capture. Uh, OBS can intercept the video signal that your computer is sending to your monitor and it can import that as a video source and then output it to Zoom which is how I usually run my Zoom meetings. I'll, um, rather than sharing my screen in Zoom like I'm doing right now, because I don't have OBS set up yet, uh, I'll just use OBS to pro provide the uh, screen image that I want to share with my attendees uh, in the meeting, rather than sharing the screen with Zoom. And that gives me the ability to mix that with many with other video sources and so on and do all sorts of neat tricks that I can't do just with Zoom. Zoom can only um, transmit the, sor the video from one source at a time. You can have multiple cameras or multiple video sources um, available to Zoom and you can switch between them one at a time but it's a little bit awkward and the process is a little bit cumbersome and Zoom can only handle one video source at a time. OBS can handle lots simultaneously including display capture. <clears throat> you can also if you have video files on your uh, stored on your hard drive OBS can take those as a video source and then send them out to uh, the whatever destination you wish, like Zoom. As does it take the Canvas Studio videos too? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, if uh, but in order to um, uh, in order to mix the Canvas Studio videos in to a an output stream from OBS you'd want to have the video files located on your local computer rather than on Canvas Studio now they were probably on your they may well have been on your local computer before you sent them to Canvas Studio in which case there's no problem if you desire you can also uh, if you if those videos on Canvas Studio were created there like using the screen recorder and never were never uh, located on your hard drive you can always download the video files that you have in your canvas studio library to your local computer as a standard digital video file and use it with obs or <laughs> you could you can use display capture and you can pull up canvas studio on your screen and play a video in Can in your Canvas Studio library and send that along to Zoom. So yeah, you can do it. There's almost no um, uh, video trick that you can't play with OBS. Just some things are a little bit more uh, smooth or a little bit easier to set up. All right. So, we've got, let's assume now that we've got <clears throat> some cameras and some monitors and some video files on our hard drive. Let's say we've got all of that connected to our computer so that the computer operating system can see them. Uh, mostly it's cameras plugged in via USB ports, but it's also these uh, screen outputs and uh, maybe video files located on the hard drive the Windows knows where to f or Mac OS knows where to find all those now the trick is connecting those sources to OBS letting 
OBS know how to find them. And to do that, we use what is called the sources box in OBS. And here's a screenshot of this, <clears throat> but I'm just going to go ahead and do this live now. I'm going to bring up OBS on my shared Zoom screen. You should be seeing <coughs> there's a big black rectangle mostly, but the the uh, controls in OBS are mostly located in this lower 20% or so of the screen, which hopefully you're able to see. I'm sorry I can't blow that up. It's just whatever size it is on my screen, so you may have to peer a little bit. And you're going to make want to make sure that you're in um, speaker view in your Zoom meeting. If you go to the upper right hand corner of your Zoom screen, you see a little view button and you have the option for either speaker or gallery view. If you're in gallery view right now with the, uh, you know, the Hollywood squares filling the screen, you want to change the speaker view for sure. So you can see what I'm going to show you. Otherwise it's going to be way too tiny. <laughs> okay. So here's the OBS interface. And the first thing we deal with after we get it installed and, um, and running is this sources box here. This is where you add your video, you, you connect your video sources to OBS. And the little interface here is pretty simple. Um, obviously to add a source, you click the plus sign. If you decide you no longer want a source, you use the minus sign to remove it. But we'll start out by hitting the plus sign. And we're given all sorts of different types of video sources we can input into Zoom. And we're not going to deal with most of those. <laughs> They're not necessary. I mean, you can put your, um, your Xbox <laughs> or your PS5 your game console in here and so on. It's uh, uh, there's quite a range of things that you can use as sources in uh, OBS, but we're going to concentrate on two of these for the most part. Video capture devices is French for cameras. Okay, almost all of the video capture devices you're going to use are, are cameras. And Display captures, what's displaying on your computer screen. Those are the two things I'm going to show you today. And you can do wonders with just those. Are you going, by the end of the day today, are you going to know everything there is to know about OBS? Darn sure not, because I sure don't know everything there is to know about OBS. But um, you're going to know enough to do some pretty amazing stuff. And if you get the bug, you can always play with some of these other types of sources as well. But we're going to start with cameras or video capture devices. We'll select that and we're asked to um, create a new video capture source for OBS. And we can call it anything we want. The default name is video capture device. But I'm going to call this my, I'm going to connect first my Logitech webcam. So I name the source that and I click OK. Then I get a screen which allows me to pick the video source, source that uh, from the video sources that OBS can see by virtue of being in connect connected to my operating system now, I can go to this device menu right here and just click this little menu button out to the right and I see all of the different video capture devices that are connected to this computer that OBS can see. And one of those is my HD Pro Webcam C920. That's my little Logitech webcam. And that is a very common type of camera. If this were a laptop, I'd also have my built-in camera here. It would say something like integrated camera or something like that. And I can add that one as a source. But I'm on a desktop computer here that 
doesn't have a built-in webcam, so I, I, I'm going to use my uh, external uh, Logitech webcam to illustrate this process. I just select that, and boom, there's what that uh, webcam is seeing. I turn around, turn around, it can see me. I've got it off to the side here. I'm using a different camera for my Zoom meeting right now, so because uh, I don't want the two to conflict. So that's all I really have to do here. And I can just say OK, and that becomes a source in OBS. And I see it up here in my um, screen. Usually it will fill the screen. I've been, I was playing with this earlier, so usually it will fill the screen. And I can, uh, one of the things I can do with OBS is I can control how big a portion of my output window a particular video source occupies. I can grab the, um, the handles at the corner of the highlighted window here that represents that video source and I can make it smaller or larger by clicking and dragging on those. There, if I pull this down and get it as big as it will fit, though I notice something about this webcam. And this is a very common webcam, so I'm going to go one step further with this one. You could stop right here and use this as a source and be perfectly happy. But I can get more out of this particular webcam, I know, because you notice it's, it's not filling the, the rectangle here in um, the display rectangle in OBS. And that tells me that this webcam is not outputting at the highest resolution that it's capable of. Uh, the default resolution on this one is considerably lower than its maximum capability for whatever reason. So I'm in the process of adding that webcam. I can um, go to this line here, this box here that says resolution. And the default is the so-called device default. And this is the default for the resolution for the HP webcam. But I happen to know from reading the documentation and from using this webcam for 10 years, I know that there, it, can do, it can be sharper than that. It can display at higher resolution. So I can set this resolution type to custom. And then I can choose the actual resolution that I want it to display at. And I happen to know that the maximum for this one is 1920 by 1080, so-called high definition, full 1080p high definition video. If I select that, notice the difference. It's showing a lot, it's got a much wider shot. It's uh, the aspect ratio, the ratio of width to height has changed, and it's a lot sharper than it was, and it's showing more. Now I click OK, and now I have to, I tinkered with my uh, display, so i got to untinker that to fit the entire thing in there. So that's something to watch out for if you have that particular webcam, is to, uh, there, now it fits the screen, the display screen. Uh, lightly or neatly. So I have my first source, and if I hadn't been, if I hadn't chosen to mess with the resolution, it, there's just nothing to it. I just select the source I want and um, add it as a an input source to the sources box in OBS. Let's try that again. That's the you'll spend more time doing that. Well, that's one of the two tasks in setting up OBS that you'll spend most of your time on. So let's make sure everybody's comfortable with that because you can't use OBS unless you get your sources connected. So let's add another source. Same process. We'll add another camera. And I'm going to call this one uh, Doc Cam. Document camera. Well, let's not be abbreviate abbreviatory <laughs> what do you call it a document camera I have a little uh, 
USB connected document camera attached to this computer. Um, I just name the source document camera. I could call it Fred if I wanted to. That, that doesn't mean anything to OBS. It's just, that's for me. So I remember what this source is connected to. And I click OK. He said, there we go. Finally listen to me. Oh, and it happened to pick my document camera by uh, coincidence there. If I open up this device menu again, I see that one of the options is labeled IPvo Ziggy HD, which is the name that this device reports to Windows when it connects to it. That is my document camera. So I'm going to leave that alone. This one suffers from a, from a similar situation to the, uh, what we saw with the HP webcam or the, um, the Logitech webcam. It's not outputting at its maximum possible resolution either. So I can change from device default resolution to custom and switch. This one will also output at 1920 by 1080 or high definition video. But it would work fine if I left it at the other one. It just wouldn't be operating at the limits of its capability. So now you see you, the image is bigger, you see more of it, and it's sharper. The birthday card I got on my last uh, birthday, uh, a little bit of Pacific Northwest humor there. Uh, we occasionally encounter bears out walking our dogs and things like that here. It's, a, it's that kind of place. All right, well, let's not stop there. Let's do another camera. Cameras are video capture devices. So I'm gonna bore you with this until you remember this one easily. Uh, we'll call this one <clears throat> the I Love Me Camera. You've got one of those you use when you're uh, teaching in Zoom. So your students can, uh, and don't worry, Elizabeth, I surely will uh, post this recording later. But <clears throat> you've got a camera that's on you, so when you're talking to your students, they can see you. <clears throat> so I'll call that the I Love Me camera, and I'll OK that. And the one I want here, <clears throat> remember I showed you that little dongle, that little device that allows you to hook a, <clears throat> uh, a camcorder <coughs> into your computer and make it operate like a webcam through a USB port. Well, this is one of those. The camera I have normally playing, not the camera you're seeing me on right this minute in Zoom. That's a, an extra camera that I'm using that uh, I'm, I'm not going to put into OBS as a source because I don't want it interfering with uh, the, what I'm trying to demonstrate here. But this is another camera that's pointed at me right now. It's a better camera. Um, it's a Canon X11 camcorder. Uh, it's a semi-pro camera. And um, it gives me an, it'll give me a nice sharp picture. So I'm gonna, it's one of these two USB 3.0 capture devices. I have two cameras coming in on one of those, and I'm not sure which one is which because they're named to the operating system. They look identical, or at least they have the same name. So I'm just going to have to pick one of these and see what comes out. That ain't it. Okay, so let's get the other. We'll add that one in a minute. There's the I Love Me camera. Okay, let me uh, get this out of the way. There we are. Okay, this is my, the camera I normally use when I'm presenting in Zoom. It's a little sharper, a little bit better color quality and so on, and a uh, much better lens than the one I was using a minute ago. Um, there it is. And um, this one is filling the screen nicely. I know it's, it's operating at high definition, at 1080p, so I don't have to do any messing around with resolution or anything like that. I'll just okay that one. And that's all there is to adding a source. It can just go that fast. Three clicks. Click, 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 and you've got a source. Let me add one more camera in. 
just takes a second. We'll call this leak cam. Uh, and OK. And this one is that the other one of those USB 3.0 capture devices. And that is an actual camera that is pointing out my back window, looking out over the lake. Uh, it's uh, very similar to the camera you were, you're seeing me on in Zoom right now, in the little thumbnail up at the upper right. So that's a live shot. Um, this really puts virtual backgrounds in Zoom to shame. You know, I can make take a picture of that and put it behind me in a Zoom meeting using the virtual background feature, right? But it'd just be a, a picture. This is a live shot. They were having boat races out on the lake there, which they do in, on the 4th of July and Labor Day and things like that. You'd be able to see the jet skis running around and everything. And someday we're going to be, I'm going to be sitting here and presenting and the Ponderay Paddler is going to surface out there and we're all going to be famous. The Ponderay Paddler is our, this is Lake Ponderay behind me here, and the Ponderay Paddler is our version of the Loch Ness Monster. Um, not quite as Scottish, but uh, uh, every bit as legendary in our little local area here. So maybe, maybe we'll be lucky today. So there's my lake camp. So I've got just that fast. I've got four cameras attached here. And uh, there you just saw a car go by on the road down there. That's a live shot out my back window. All right, so I have cameras galore. Um, I also have the option to add, uh, we discussed it earlier, those display capture sources. I can put or I can share a particular screen uh, with OBS. I happen to have three on this computer, so I'm going to pick one that I'm not using right now. Um, I'm going to add a source, and that would be a display capture source. And I'm going to call this one a screen. It's my left screen, leftmost screen of the three I have in front of me here. So I'll call it left screen. And OK. And that's not my left screen. That's my Zoom screen that you're, <laughs> that you're seeing. Um, that's, or that's my Zoom screen, uh, my host screen. That's my monitor number two, or my middle monitor. So let me see. That's the one I want. That's my left monitor. OK. So that's a source of an OBS, and it's a live source. If I bring something up on that monitor, like a web page, you'll be able to see it. There's our OBS project web page. Here's my, uh, my outline that I made that PowerPoint presentation from. And it's, it's dynamic, it's live. So if I do something on this screen, you can see what I'm doing. Uh, Dwayne, how do you turn a, a source off and know that it's off? Well, if you're not seeing it um, being transmitted, you know it's not being transmitted. Also, um, we're not actually... A full answer to that question, Dwayne, is going to have to wait for a moment until we talk about a concept in OBS called scenes. Because it's scenes that you actually output. These sources are just input for OBS right now. If I want to send them to something else, I have to make uh, scenes and add the sources to the scenes. So if a source is not in the scene I'm displaying, I know it's not being transmitted. And no one can see anything coming out of OBS that I can't see first. It, it, you're not going to have a hot mic kind of situation where you, you expose something to your Zoom meeting that you didn't mean to. 
or at least not without your knowledge. If you do, you will um, you'll know you screwed up immediately and be able to fix it. It's not going to just sit there and display without your knowledge. Good question, though, because we'll often have sources showing things that we don't want to share with our meeting right now. We want to wait for the right time <coughs> or whatever. So, so there's our first display capture source we called left screen. I called left screen. Um, and that's, that's all we need right now. So I've got these multiple sources added, but I can't really use them yet. In order to use them, I have to, <coughs> excuse me, have to create what are called scenes in OBS. And this is probably the single most confusing concept if you don't have somebody show you how this builds from scratch. Scenes contain one or more sources and can be output from OBS. You start, and, and we're going to work with scenes in the scenes box here, just to the left of the sources box. Dave. Uh, yes, Adam. I'm Steve. But um, Steve. The, when I can't stretch out a particular camera to fill the whole box, where did I change the resolution? Ah. Let's see. Let me pull up the... It was under, you change resolution type from mm -hmm. device default to custom. Okay, thank you. And then you pick the resolution that's available out of the list. And the camera usually shares with Windows what resolutions it's capable of. So if you pick one out of this list, it should work. But you can almost always get away with 1920 by 1080, which is high definition, yeah. called high definition video. Good question. You're 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 making good progress if you if you're asking that question. All right. So you start with scenes with one default scene that you'll probably never use for anything else. It's just a a catch bin for all of your sources. All of your sources go into that first scene when you connect them to OBS. And that's all that scene is really used for. If you want to output any of these sources from OBS to, to Zoom or to a recording or live streaming or whatever, you have to create a scene for the source. And you create a scene in much the same way you created the source by clicking on the plus sign, the bottom left of the scenes box. And it asks you to name the scene. And by default, it names them scene two, scene three, scene four, scene five, and so on. But um, I like to name them to match. I like to put, uh, I like to make a scene for each source. Um, with just that one source in it so that I can pull up just one source and output it at any time. So let's make those. I've got, uh, you know, the left screen, late cam, I love me camera, document cam. Let's make a scene for each of those. Start with the last one there, the Logitech webcam. I'll uh, call this, and I, I can't call the scene and the source exactly the same thing because OBS gets confused. It is free software after all. You can't expect it to be perfect. So um, I'm just going to call this uh, C920 webcam, just as long as it's not quite the same thing as the name of the source. I'll say OK. And at this point, of course, you stroke out because, oh my God, I just blew it away. It's a black screen. It's all gone. I've ruined it. No, 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 no. Everything's fine. Um, this, what this, uh, dis the display window is showing now is the contents of this scene to which you have not yet added any sources. 
And it, over here in the sources box, it looks like all your sources are gone. Oh no, where'd they go? Well, they're in that default scene at the top. They're still there, not to worry. But this scene named C920 webcam is empty. It's got no sources in it. Now I can, I can proceed to add a source to it. I do that by clicking on the plus sign in the sources box at the lower left of the sources box. And the, I, this is a video capture device. I'm adding a camera. And now I use the existing sources that I've already added to OBS. I select add existing and click that radio button. And here's my Logitech webcam. I click OK. And there's that, there I am, there's that so, uh, scene. All right, now I can proceed to create one single source scenes for each of the other sources that I have as well. Let's do that pretty quickly. Um, let's see, the, oop, too quickly. Uh, let's do the document camera next. We'll go over here, we'll make a new scene. I'm gonna call it, and I call that document camera, so I'll name this doc cam. Remember, they can't have exactly the same name. And I'm going to add the source to that. It's a video capture device. It's an existing one, and it's the document camera. Okay. So that's that scene. I've got that one made. Making single source scenes takes no time at all. So let's finish that out just so that we're all, we've seen that. There's nothing like repeti uh, repetition for learning. Repetition is the soul of learning, as I recall from listening to the education professors at <laughs> various uh, institutions I've worked at over the years. Um, so let's add, uh, let's see, what's the next one I need to add? Uh, the I Love Me camera. All right, uh, we'll add a scene here. I'll call that I Love Me. Okay. And to that scene, I'll add the video capture device named I Love Me camera, an existing one. Bingo. So, it just works, usually. <laughs> Sometimes OBS will get ticky. And will something will suddenly just disappear or refuse to display or whatever. Uh, it's not uncommon to have to um, shut OBS down when you're first configuring it. It's not uncommon to have to shut it down, reboot your computer, and start everything over. Not start over from scratch, but pick up where you left off in configuring and so on. I have done everything I can today to ensure that that doesn't happen to us so that <laughs> we don't um, have any confusion from that sort of thing. But it, it can get... Uh, it, it is free software. Occasionally it... Uh, hangs up and you have to restart it and continue from that point. But so far we're doing great. I rebooted, I uninstalled OBS, tore out all the settings that I'd made in it, and rebooted my computer before I started this today <laughs> in the hopes that I would get through all this without anything um, getting frisky on me. Okay, so um, let's see. The next, if I go back to my default scene up here at the top, the next one I need is the lake cam. All right, so I'll make a new scene. We'll call it lake camera. As long as it's not identical, it's fine. And I'll add the lake cam to it, just as I've done with the others. There it is. I'm about to lose that one. <laughs> it's getting a... Getting cloudy out there. Lava will start snowing any time. Okay, and let's see, what do I have left? I have my left screen. I haven't yet made a, a separate scene for, so I'll make that. We'll just call that, I'm gonna call that um, screen, screen left. <laughs> That's, obvious enough to me, but it's not going to confuse um, OBS, so I'll select that. And now I'm going to add not a video capture device, but a display capture. I have an existing one that I've created a minute ago. Uh, that's the left screen one. I'll add the source left screen to the scene screen left. And OK, and there it is. 
Notice how nice and sharp that is? It's sharing that at full high definition video. That's probably, unless you have a 4K TV, that's as good as your big TV will do. Um, OBS does not have the capability. Uh, actually, OBS does have the capability to handle 4K video, but I don't have any 4K cameras except this one. Finally updated my iPhone. And I could hook my iPhone in as a video source in OBS if I chose to. I'd need to get the little cable that connects the lightning connector to HDMI and then to USB um, to get it into my computer, but I could do that. I'm just not going to do that today. So your, your iPhone, or your Android phone for that matter, with the appropriate adapter, could be used as a video source for OBS. Almost anything, that any device that will output video can be tied into OBS as a source and then placed into a scene so that you can share that with uh, your meeting attendees in Zoom. And to switch between these scenes, all I have to do is click on the scene I want in the scenes box. There's my web, uh, my Logitech webcam, there's my document camera, there's my I Love Me camera, there's the late camera, and there's my left screen. So, at this point, I could use this with Zoom. Uh, because I can output these screens to Zoom, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. It's, it's shockingly trivial to connect this to Zoom. But before we do that, you know, what I've done so far with OBS, you could do just with Zoom. I could, uh, all of those um, cameras also show up in my list of possible video sources for Zoom. And I could use Zoom to switch from one to the other. It's a, it's a little cumbersome, but I could do it. So switching between individual video sources is wasting the capabilities of OBS. And the trick here, the single most important detail about OBS that I know, is that the scenes in OBS are not limited to a single video source. You can have multiple video sources displaying simultaneously in an OBS scene, so-called multi-source scenes. And that's where the real power of OBS kicks in. For instance, the subject of yesterday's seminar was making it possible for your students to see you, your actual image, and your live while you were presenting in PowerPoint. Well, I can do that <laughs> with OBS. Um, I can uh, add another scene here. And I'm going to call this one uh, left screen and me. Remember, you can name these things anything you want. And OK. And this goes black because there's no sources in this yet. So I can add me, my I Love Me camera, to that source. And here I am. And I can add my left screen, which was a display capture source, an existing one. I can add that. Boom. Well, wait a minute. That's not very useful. Maybe I've got both of those scenes in there, or sources in that scene, but one's covering the other up. No problem. Because I can select a source in a scene by just clicking on this screen here 
clicking anywhere inside the window that's displaying the source. And then I get these um, handles at the corners and the centers of the faces of, e of the rectangle. And I can govern the size of this, the display size for this uh, source in this scene just by clicking and dragging. And look, there I am hiding behind the um, my screen here. But this is not really what I want right now either. I want myself over top of the screen. So I'll pull that back out to full, pull the um, window here, the my screen display out to the full display window here and I will change the order of the sources in the source box here for this scene. I do that just by picking one of them and using these up or down arrows here. If I want that source to be on the I Love Me camera to be on top, I just highlight it and click the up arrow here and now there I am. And now I can make myself smaller and there's the screen behind me. And if I pull up something else on there, like here's my, this is another uh, version of my PowerPoint for today that I've put into um, Google Slides and Google Docs. If I run this slideshow, Oh, in the wrong place. So it's easy to forget sometimes which screen you're working with. Okay. Now here I am down here in the lower right hand corner of my PowerPoint slides. This is where we were, I think, when we left. And I'm, you're seeing me. And you're seeing that screen at the same time. Anything I'm displaying on that screen, which in this case happens to be this, this Google Slides slide, but it could be anything. It could be Microsoft Word or a spreadsheet or uh, Canvas or uh, Canvas Studio or whatever piece of software you're trying to demonstrate to your students or show or whatever image you're trying to show to your students. And here you are down the lower right-hand corner. Um, as a um, you know a presence so they can see you as well at the same time and if you don't like that spot you can click and drag that window around put yourself right in the middle if you <laughs> put yourself anywhere in that screen that you like and you can make yourself as big or as small as you wish This is, um, for the, the technical term here, is compositing. I'm displaying two videos at the same time on the same screen. Not that that term is important. And um, OBS allows me to do that. And I don't have to stop here. I can add other sources as well. I could add the lake cam to this. And put it over here. It's also above, um, it's also higher up in the list than the, uh, than the left screen. So it displays over top of it. But I, here I've got three video sources displaying at the same time. And I can talk about all three of them at once. Just like they do on the evening news. But... That doesn't fit my name here, but that OBS doesn't care about that. I'm going to go ahead and take that, take that one out. I just wanted to show you that that sort of thing was possible. You can have as many sources as you can fit on the screen displaying at the same time. Just take the, to take out the late cam, I just select it and click the minus sign. 
and it asks me, you sure you want to remove it from this scene? I'm not removing it from OBS, I'm just removing it from this scene. So here I am. And this, this is the trick I use more than anything else with OBS. I'll bring up my PowerPoint slide or whatever else I'm talking about, maybe Canvas or my, um, or, <laughs> you know, OBS or whatever. And I will, um, um, good question, Holly, just a second, I'll answer that. Uh, it does, um, you know, I can be visible to everybody. And mercifully small, <laughs> so that people don't really have to look at a large close-up of me, which at my age is no pleasure to anyone. I can't get away from it, but you can. So um, this just gives me a capability I use every time I, I present in Zoom. I've, I'm always running Zoom with this a type of uh, scene. And then I can vary what's behind me just by varying what is displayed on my left monitor in the usual way. There's my Google Drive. Okay, uh, the question was, does this use a lot of bandwidth in Zoom? Not generally any more than you would use just with a webcam. Um, with a high definition webcam, since I've set my webcam to send high definition video, I'm not using really any more bandwidth here than if I would if I were just sending my image out in high definition from my webcam through Zoom, with OBS not being uh, uh, involved. However, you can you can get into a situation where you are using more bandwidth than you think you are. I'll I'll share my experience with that. Um, I'll show you another type of source, which is not so, you, something you may or may not use. Um, I can add a different kind of source to uh, OBS. I'll go back to my catch-all scene here at the top, and I'll add a source, a new source to OBS. I'm going to make it a media source, which usually means a video file that's stored on your hard drive. Uh, I'll call this Snow. And I'll OK that. And now I have to pick the file, the video file, that I want to use as a source. I uh, make sure that local file is checked here. That's the only thing I've figured out how to use with this media source so far. And I'll browse for that file. It brings up a file manager window and I'll go to videos, my video library, and I'll look for, uh, I think I called it snow. Let's see. spell surely where is that well, I thought I had that here where did I put that so what happens when you add lib you didn't queue something up uh, the reason I want to show you this one is to show you what this can do to your bandwidth Oh, that's right. That had one of those funky. Ah, there it is. is it the winter one? Yeah, it's, the, it's a winter one indeed. That's yeah, on the right hand side down a little bit. We passed it. Uh, this, I think this is the one I need right here. I'm going to open that one. And let's see. And okay, that. And this one. I know right away that I've done something uh, dangerous because I had to reduce the size, display size of this, which means that the resolution is higher than, um, uh, oh, what did I do there? 
That's interesting. <laughs> OBS just gorked on that one. That was a 4K video that I shot with my iPhone. And um, OBS just shut it down because it was going to use too much bandwidth. It doesn't always do that. Sometimes it just lets it run. And at that point, I get a, then your bandwidth usage goes way up. If you're using, if you're playing back videos that are higher than high definition in resolution, like a four, 4K is roughly four times the pixels of, uh, of uh, high definition. When you do that, you can use an excessive amount of bandwidth with OBS. But uh, you'll know it. <laughs> your computer will start complaining. Mine has a fan that cools the processor. And when I really uh, strain it, the fan starts howling. I mean, it's enough that you may have heard it spool up there for a second. It gets problematic. <laughs> it's something that people can hear on the other end of the line. And that, I know when I've, and this is a very powerful computer, so I know when I've strained it that way, I'm probably doing, I'm probably using more bandwidth than I should. <laughs> I shut that down pretty quickly. But that shows you how a media source works, or how you can add a media source as well. Okay, let me, now let me get back to my left screen and me. There I am. Uh, let's see, some other possibilities, of course, would be to, another one I'll use sometimes when I want to uh, show off where I live, is uh, I'll make a scene called Lake and Me. And I'll add the lake cam to the scene. And then my I Love Me camera. To the scene. I have to say add existing. I always forget to do that and then click I love me camera and OK and then make myself put myself down here in the corner and uh, you can see what a pretty place northern Idaho is which is why half of California has moved up here in the last 20 years <laughs> including me. <laughs> Um, I got, we got real lucky when we found this house, the, the seller was motivated. They'd been trying to sell it for over a year and, uh, it, uh, we managed to pick it up for a price that retired educators or an ed a retired educator and a retired librarian could do. Um, uh, we hit a moment in time. It's, uh, the Northern Idaho is rated as the most overpriced real estate market in the United States right now. But uh, yeah, timing is everything. So I can display myself in this. I can mix these sources uh, any way I like. And I can have as many sources in a single scene as I want, as it makes sense to do. As people can, as many as people can keep track of at one time. So, that's pretty much how you set up OBS and configure it. It's not rocket science. You have to add your sources first, then you create scenes and add sources to the scene. The sources that you've already added to OBS get added to individual scenes. You can have as many different scenes as you like. As far as I know, you can have as many different sources connected to your com uh, to OBS as you can connect to your computer. And so this gives you tremendous flexibility in what you can display to your students. And as uh, Eric demonstrated a few days ago with a video of his, you can take OBS on a laptop into a, um, a high-tech smart classroom where you have all sorts of cameras and so on feeding into a, a video switcher and so on, a physical video switcher in the system, and you can add that switcher to OBS as a source. And you can display all the cameras that that 
classroom system has attached to it and all the video sources it has attached to it. You can display those and through OBS and mix them with other sources that you have attached to your laptop and so on. And uh, you can just do some truly astounding stuff. If I have time here in a moment, I'm going to um, uh, show Eric's a little bit of Eric's video that he made, demonstration video on that that he made. But I want to make sure we get through the basics here first. Yeah, I see you, doing. <laughs> For those of you who may be motivated to play with the annotation tools in Zoom, I do have the option in Zoom to identify um, annotators. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, Dave, how do I bring up my screen? I do display and I get a, a thousand screens. You just found that's absolutely, I, that was something I just about to talk about. It probably looked something like this. I don't know, I can't show that right now where I am. But if you're going to use screen sources like this in OBS, you have to have two or more monitors. Two is enough. Um, because you can't display a monitor that, you're dis that you've got uh, OBS running on. It's like you get a situation that looks like you're standing between two parallel mirrors and the images, you know, if you look at one mirror, the images just vanish, multiple images vanish into, a, into the distance, into a vanishing point. Um, that's what will happen if you try to share, uh, if you try to make a screen that you're using with OBS or with Zoom. Um, and a video source in OBS. So you have to have at least two screens in OBS uh, in, um, on your computer. One to run OBS and Zoom and other things and another to run the applications that you want to share with your students or with your colleagues. And that is uh, that's why I showed you that particular trick last. You can do some you can do something like this uh, nope, I'm sorry, like this, just fine with just one screen. And you can feed that to Zoom. But if you're going to do the trick with the putting yourself in front of a computer screen, you got to have two monitors. Let me suggest to you that if you're really serious about your Zoom meetings, you need two monitors anyway. Um, it is very difficult. Good for you, Victoria. It is very diff difficult to do uh, a lot of things in Zoom without a second screen to park things on while you're waiting to use them. And second screens are very easy to connect to a laptop or a desktop. And if you have a Mac, you can even use your iPad as a second screen. The um, the only thing you need to connect a second screen to most desktop or laptop computers is a, an old monitor. It doesn't have to be anything special. You probably go down to your local uh, independent computer store and they'll probably have some used monitors sitting on the shelf that you can buy for peanuts. And then you need a cable to connect the two, to connect that monitor to your computer. The computer is smart enough these days to recognize that monitor and use it automatically. And it will automatically use it in the mode that I'm using in here, which is to extend the desktop. Let me show you what I mean. I'll add another scene here, or another source, excuse me, to OBS. I'm going to add my another video capture device, and I'm going to call this uh, Switcher. This is my hardware switcher that I happen to have. 
like the ones, Eric, that are built into the, uh, somewhat similar to the ones that are built into those uh, uh, high flex classrooms. I'm going to add that as a source. And that one is, the device I want is called Blackmagic. It's a, Blackmagic's the company that makes the switcher. And it identifies to the operating system as Blackmagic Design. I select that. And I OK it. OK. And this is one of those times when it has decided to be ticky. Let me restart the switcher. Let me try this. I may have to, I might have to Ah! Woke it up. Alright. Um, save that. Uh, this is a little hardware switcher I can use to switch between different inputs. It's the hardware equivalent of OBS. But I have a uh, pan tilt zoom camera tuned into this and you can see my three monitors this is the only way I can display all three monitors at the same time forgive the little um, crankiness there it uh, is settling down so by having an extended desktop what I mean is that I can take windows from one of these monitors and just drag it across and, and display it on any of the monitors like so. That's called an extended desktop. And that's what you want with a multiple monitor setup for Zoom or Zoom and OBS. And all you have to do is find the right cable and an old monitor to use. And it'll work fine. The, the secondary, second monitor doesn't have to be anything special. It's especially easy to do this with a laptop because lap, the, uh, the second or the external video connector on a laptop is very easy to access generally. Uh, not so much on a um, desktop. You have to climb down and get a, behind it and plug it in there. And you have to have a cable that will connect the output connector on your computer to the input connector on the laptop. It is um, not rocket science, but you just have to get the right adapter, cable or adapter to make that work. We do a session on putting multiple monitors on a computer. Uh, that, uh, here I'm, I've got another camera with me on it in OBS. Um, and uh, that is available if I go back to the left screen in me. That's available in our, oops, that's not what I want, on our on-demand video site, sdccdolvid.org. That's in every, in my signature in every email I send. And if we go to just say monitor or multiple monitor, search for that in the uh, in the search box and we've got a couple of um, recording zoom recordings we did showing you how to do that with different types of combinations of computers and monitors and uh, connector types and so on anybody can do it you can do it and it really does make your Zoom sessions a lot easier for you and a lot richer for your students. Just that, even without OBS, <laughs> it's worth having the second monitor. But if you're going to do this trick you're seeing with me doing here right now with myself over top of a computer screen, you're going to have to have two monitors <sighs> or more.
independent. Most computers you can hook two monitors with no problem. Hooking the third one is a little bit more of a challenge. You're probably not going to need to do that. All right, so we've got all this wonderful video magic we can create in OBS. And there's a little bit more I'm going to show you, but there's something else I have to show you first to make sure I don't get um, uh, too comfortable here and not show you this next thing, which is the most important thing you need to know after you get OBS set up to this point. And that's how to send this um, uh, video that you see in the OBS preview window here to Zoom. The good thing about that is that it's, tri it's insanely trivial to do that. You see my OBS screen here, and there's this control menu over here on the right that we haven't touched yet. About the only thing I usually hit in this menu is the option to start virtual camera. That's what that says. It's a little hard to see. Start virtual camera. So the first thing I need to do to feed this as a source to Zoom is click start virtual camera. And that, then it changes to say stop virtual camera. So it's a toggle. You can turn that virtual camera output from OBS on and off. Now that doesn't apparently do anything here. But now I'm going to go back to Zoom and I'm going to stop my screen share of that monitor with OBS on it. And I'm now going to share my Zoom screen. Right now you're seeing my Zoom screen with my Zoom menus down here and so on. All I have to do to take the input from OBS is to select the OBS virtual camera as my input source and then start my video. Now you're seeing me down in the lower right hand corner and my you're seeing exactly what was on my preview window in OBS but now it's displaying in Zoom and I can talk yada 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 to you I can then show you all sorts of different stuff behind me here I can pull up canvas And I can log into Canvas and I can run a course tour for my students. Or well, I, I seem to be in Canvas Studio there, so I can go to my Canvas dashboard. I can pull up a course. I can talk about it. I can show my students things. They can see me at the same time. And if I decide they need to see me more, uh, to concentrate more on me than on the screen, I can pull myself up and take over the discussion and then pull myself back down. I'm doing that on my OBS screen over here. And um, I can present in Zoom using OBS as my video source instead of a simple webcam. And I can do all these tricks that I've showed you in OBS and send them to Zoom. Send the resulting video to Zoom. The best thing about this to me is that when I'm sharing, and I'm going to stop my screen share now, and you're seeing me uh, on your Zoom screens because this is the video that I'm sending out. This is my basic Zoom webcam video, or well, it's the video feed that's coming from OBS that Zoom is interpreting as just another webcam and sending the video on to you. And you're still seeing that screen behind me in good clarity. 
<clears throat> but you're also seeing me at the same time. And I could add in those other sources or I can switch to other scenes in um, OBS just by clicking on the appropriate scene in the scenes box. So I can switch between all these scenes that I've made in OBS and send that to Zoom. And the best part about it is that the uh, what I see in front of me when I'm doing this is exactly what you're seeing. When I'm sharing my Zoom screen, it can be difficult for me to tell what you're seeing because with three monitors, sometimes I forget which one I'm sharing. I'm sure that would never happen to you, but uh, when you get to my age, it probably will. And um, so this keeps me on the straight and narrow. I know what you're seeing. You're seeing the same thing I am. So if I'm looking at the wrong thing, I know I'm not showing you the right thing either. Uh, so this really makes Zoom work a lot better for me at my age. This one trick or this one uh, property alone is worth it. There is one other thing I'd like to show you here. Uh, now, as, now that I've shown you how to connect the, your OBS video output with your Zoom video input, I mean, it's trivial. You just turn on the virtual camera in OBS and then you select the OBS virtual camera as your video source in Zoom and you're off and running. Uh, one thing that I can show you here, because I'm sitting in front of a green screen, is how to use green screen effects in OBS. That was my, <coughs> I believe, my next uh, slide here. Uh, there's OBS scenes. We've been through all that and how to be, we've covered all that. Chroma key effects in OBS. How to do things like this. Have myself float over top of uh, other video sources uh, rather than appearing in a little window here with a, an outline, uh, with a green background behind me. This will only work if you have a green screen. Actually, you can use a blue screen as well, like they did with Star Wars when they did this uh, technique in Star Wars. But green or blue, you got to have. You can't do it with just a blank wall or whatever. It's got to be green within reasonable limits, unless you want it to get really complicated anyway. <coughs> but green screens you can buy on Amazon. You can buy a green drape on Amazon for 20 bucks. It's big enough. And you can figure out some way to hang it up behind you and tack it on a wall or hang it over some furniture or over a door or over a, coat, a couple of coat racks or whatever. Or you can buy a support, screen, a support system for it and so on, which is not very much either. But for 20 bucks, you can get started with green screening. And here I am. I'm sitting in front of a green screen. I, this will only work with a source where the subject is in front of a green background, myself being the subject in this case. To make this work in OBS, I need to share my OBS, uh, use Zoom's screen share here to show my OBS. You can't use OBS to show people the OBS screen. You get that cascading effect if you try. Uh, so I need to share my screen that I have OBS up on with you. Now you're seeing my OBS screen as you were for quite some time there. To make this work, um, you have to activate what's called the chroma keyer. This technique is called chroma key by uh, technically. Um, you're, or remove a color. What I want to do is remove this green color behind me and replace it with whatever's underneath it in this scene. To do that, I have to add what's called an effects filter to um, 
this particular video source, the one where I am in front of a green screen. That's the I Love Me camera here. Don't worry about the terminology. You just follow the follow the yellow brick road here. You right click on the I Love Me camera and it brings up a, this very intimidating looking menu of all the things you can do to affect this particular source and um, uh, oh, send it to a projector, things like this. And so I, I don't care about any of that. I just go to the filters option in this this property or this menu that's um, related to this source and instead of an audio video filter which you might reasonably expect you want an effects filter it's just the way it is just accept it so the effects filters box is the lower one so i go to the plus sign in the lower filters box to add a filter and one of those filters is chroma key that's the one I want to make this work. I don't have to rename it or anything. I just say, okay. And bada bing, most of the green color is gone and replaced with nothing. And if you look at me down here in the lower right, you can see that I'm more or less, you can see that more or less see the screen or the, uh, the image behind me showing through. To make that look better, I adjust the parameters here on the keyer, and normally you only have to bother with the first two, similarity and smoothness. Just grab that uh, little biscuit at the end of that uh, blue line there, click on it, hold down the mouse button, and drag it back and forth. And then you do the same thing with the smoothness. And you do both a few times, two or three times, until you get it, look, get it looking pretty good. So none of that green color is still visible. And there's not too much sparkling or anything going on, too many video uh, artifacts. And let me just get this out of the way. Let me make this a little bigger, a little, bit, a little easier to see how good a job it's doing. Actually, I've hit it pretty close there just by tinkering with it a little bit. So you just move those top two sliders back and forth a little bit. And now you get that wonderful um, chroma key effect that you've seen in so many movies. That highly paid actor was not really standing on the lip of a volcano in that movie, okay? He was standing in front of a green screen and they were putting a... Uh, a recording of a volcano erupting behind him <laughs> and if it's done well enough and if it's edited carefully enough you can't tell that the son of a gun wasn't actually standing on the lip of the volcano but um, this allows you to put yourself uh, right in the middle of any other source that you like your and and this will work in any source that uh, that I love me cameras or any scene that I love me that I love me cameras in like the lake and me now I'm just kind of floating over the lake I can make myself bigger and so on looks like I'm sitting in front of the biggest plate glass window you ever saw which is you can tell oh that's embarrassing you can tell with this ca uh, this light level and this angle of the sun how dirty that window is geez that's embarrassing. I ought to wash that window before I do this again. <laughs> okay. And it looks like I'm just floating there. It looks like I'm really sitting out on the back porch. So this is a fascinating effect that you can play with. And as you see, it's, it's not rocket science. Once you have OBS set up and configured, adding, if you're sitting in front of a green screen and, uh, uh, and, you have a camera on you, you can key yourself on top of any of these other sources that you've added in there uh, very simply. I can even put myself uh, in with the document camera if I 
add a new scene. We'll call it Doc, Cam, and me. And I can add the Doc Cam as a video capture device. And I can add me, my I Love Me camera. And I can make myself smaller and get myself out of the way. Let me get this chroma key window out of the way. And put myself over here. And I can do a, oh, I had my, leave my iPhone there. I can put a piece of paper up here on my document camera. And I can write on the piece of paper. I can do whiteboarding. in real time and they can see me at the same time. So there's just all sorts of things you can share with your students. And remember you can have more than two uh, sources in a scene if it makes sense. You're limited here you're limited only by your imagination. I'm just showing you some of the things I use it for. I bet you can think of things that are neater. I know Eric has. And um, the, to send this to Zoom, again, all you do is start your virtual camera and select OBS as your video source in Zoom. And that's just all there is to it. I, that's two hours worth of stuff. I know it was a, a lot of information. This has been recorded. I see the recording is still running, so <laughs> the vast majority of this has been recorded. I'll check it before I put it on to see if anything got missed. And um, the, um, it's something you can do if you choose to. And it won't cost you anything because you've already got the webcams and the monitors. Maybe you'll want a second monitor if you want to do this, uh, if you want to do something like this. But you will want a second monitor if you want to do something like this. But it's not gonna, that won't cost you much the uh and in either time or money and you can really do some interesting stuff with obs and zoom i want to end here by sharing with you and i'll just do this by sharing zoom i've got it up here somewhere sharing in zoom i should say uh d d d d d d d Here we go. All right. Um, I'm going to put this. Oh, I've got this over here on the screen. I'm going to kill my screen share here. All right. Now you're seeing this behind me. And I'm going to put this window over here and full screen it and I want to share that screen with you in zoom to get OBS out of the loop here for a second this is a video that oh and I did not turn on sound just a second let me make sure I do that share sound share that screen this just shows some of the things that you can do if you get far enough down the OBS rat hole So here is a demonstration of OBS and using OBS with the Extron system. And blows this, me away. right now what you're seeing is only OBS. And you see here on the screen uh, one camera view, which is my computer camera view. And you can see, and this, by the way, I can move these or I can change the size of these things any way that I want. And you see here on the left, you see this is 
of Canvas is viewed from uh, from a browser on my laptop. And I have a laptop here on the podium. And then here is a camera view of the room. And let me just show you. And so here, here I am in the room. And uh, this is. At no time do his hands leave his arms. It's a webcam that's on a tripod. Actually, you could put it on a chair too. There's different ways that you can attend. So far, everything Eric is doing is done through OBS. We can't see it, Dave. We uh -oh. can only see your face in the little green. Uh -oh. Thank you for letting me know. You're welcome. Alrighty. I shared the wrong screen, apparently. All right, are you seeing the video now? Uh, I believe so. It's a different screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Education, thank that, you. That's it. That's I it. sworn yeah. I chose that screen. All right, let's go back a second. With the Extron system, and this right now, what you're seeing, this right now is, or I can change the size of these things. Laptop, and I have a laptop here. On the uh, this is a webcam that's on a tripod. Actually, you could put it on a chair too. There's different ways. All right, this is all being fed to Zoom. And this is just a laptop and OBS and a couple of Eric's cameras. But then a little later on, he shows hooking this into the room system. I'm going to replace the spotlight and the tablet is going to be So now I can move about the room and get, uh, I'm sharing it, but I could also take the output of the computer and you and use it and put it trying to find three devices oh, here we go. Now, uh, into this Zoom meeting so that I can spotlight, right? I'm spotlighting my computer so that that's, I have total control of what the students see. So this is Monday night football stuff. This is stuff you expect to come out of a $2 million um, network trailer with a dozen or two highly trained video professionals all running different pieces of equipment and so on. And Eric was able to do this with the built-in hardware in this classroom and a laptop and OBS. And this is uh, stunning. <laughs> this is what you can do with it. So um, OBS is not only uh, a, an incredible tool on its own, on your home computer and so on, but you can integrate it with uh, hardware and, and microphones and so on that you'll find in smart classrooms as well once you get a little bit uh, further down the rabbit hole where Eric has gone here. And, um, and remember, OBS is free and you probably already have the laptop anyway. And if you take your laptop into a classroom and hook it up to the projector, the projector becomes your second monitor. So you can do tricks like I was showing you with putting myself in front of the OBS screen. Here, let me kill the chair here. And here I am sitting in front of the OBS screen. You can, the projector becomes your second monitor and you can do things like this without having a second monitor attached to your, uh, a second uh, desktop monitor attached to your laptop. So they're just, ever increasing possibilities as we learn more about OBS and so on. We find new tricks and new capabilities all the time. But just the basics we've covered today will take your Zoom meetings really to a new level if you use OBS as your um, video source in Zoom. And we've had some great questions during the process of the system, of the session here. Let me look at the chat tool and see if I might have missed any of those. It's quite a bit of activity there. While you're doing that, Dave, can I ask you a Luddite question? You most certainly may. Okay. Um, how do you increase the number of, you know, port, you know, connection ports? On your computer? 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, your computer only has so many uh, USB ports. Mm -hmm. And you need, you may need more to connect new cameras. To do that, you need a device called a USB hub. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at the typical one. Yeah, I have one. Ah, very good. There's one uh, Kathy has holding up. Thank you. And you get that at Best Buy? Uh, Best Buy, Amazon. Office Depot. Office okay. Depot. Anybody who has computer stuff. Here's, um, this is one I like. Um, but there, you can just buy, there are tons and tons of them. You want a US, at this point in time, you want a USB hub that is uh, designed to work with USB 3, uh, level uh, standard 3. Uh, make sure you see that in the description somewhere. Most of them will be now. And it's just a little device, and it plugs into a USB port on your computer and then gives you more USB ports that you can plug stuff into. A, a typical hub will have up to about eight wow. USB ports on it. Nice. Um, and they should, as you see, they can be quite inexpensive, but you want to make sure you take, uh, if you're thinking about using it for this, you want to make sure that it's what's called a powered hub. Some hubs uh, will just be take power off the computer from the USB port on the computer. And they'll work for basic stuff like put it, plugging in mice and keyboards and things like that. But if you want to plug cameras in, you want a hub with its own power supply that plugs into it and then plugs into the wall. So you want a powered hub. Thank you. Good question. Something I should have mentioned. Let's see. Um, is this software available to students for free as well? It sure is. And they're probably the ones who are using it right now. Their st students, uh, youngsters, which would apply to a number of you I see right here right now, uh, often use this for streaming their gameplay to their friends. Uh, watch me kill the, the gorilla or whatever, you know. Watch me shoot the, uh, uh, the uh, aliens and whatnot. I'm not quite sure I understand the attraction thereof, but that's what UB or OBS is used for as much as anything. Um, but it is absolutely free to anyone. Uh, does this fight with screencast programs? No. No, it won't have any impact on that. Uh, uh, question about security and uh, teams. If the output appears like a webcam, no, that's just the way they work. Uh, the, uh, the output from OBS looks like a webcam to any um, application that will accept input from a webcam. Uh, let's see. Another limitation is CPU speed. A little bit. Uh, OBS doesn't seem, I, I've done some tests on my machine, and OBS doesn't seem to use too much CPU uh, time or resources. That doesn't seem to really uh, be a major factor, unless you do something like try to uh, make a, a 4K video, a, a media source <laughs> that does that does exercise the processor a little bit. But other than that, it doesn't seem to have that much impact on processor usage, nor on bandwidth usage. I mean, you're already sending video in a Zoom meeting, so that takes a fair bit of bandwidth. But OBS, using OBS as a video source, doesn't seem to markedly increase the amount of bandwidth you're using. Um, and there. I will certainly post this to the um, uh, on-demand video site. I'll post this recording. <laughs> Sorry about that, Eric. 
mention uh, of uh, the view of the beautiful El Cajon Boulevard in uh, San Diego. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> What can you do? <laughs> On the other hand, that video you made, <laughs> you can just watch that anytime you want to. Um, all righty. Uh, got that one. Dual screens. Um, how do I specify which screen I want to use for a video source? I'm paraphrasing here for a video source in um, um, OBS. Well, let me show you that. I kind of, I probably went by that a little too quickly when I was setting that, setting that source up. Um, uh, let's see, I got to share my screen. I got to share my screen three. And I got to bring up OBS here. There's OBS. When I create a, let me go back to my catch all scene here at the top. When I create a source to use in, OBS, um, and I create a display capture source. I'm just going to call this one display capture. I'm not going to keep it. I click OK. I'm given this display menu here. And this is that cascading effect I was talking about. This is using OBS to share itself. This is why that doesn't work. Um, but I have this display menu here. And the display menu lists all of the screens that I have on my computer. And I think the one I was, the one I created earlier shares display two. So I'll share display three here. Now that one also, I've also got uh, cascade effects because I happen to have OBS on that screen right now. But if I okay that and I move OBS off, Except I don't want to do that. Yeah. Now uh, you're seeing my uh, my PowerPoint slide. So that's how you select the monitor that is used in a particular display capture source, just by selecting the monitor you want to use uh, in out of that mon that uh, display menu. Okay. Uh, can I have full screen on my screen display? Absolutely. Yes. There's a question about that uh, cascading effect. Just don't use OBS to share itself or to share Zoom when you're using it with Zoom. <clears throat> Uh, Eric, thank you. Uh, occasionally when a device misbehaves, a tip here, a good tip. I have seen this happen too. Um, when you're trying to add a source to OBS and you can't see anything, sometimes all you have to do is change the source to a different device and then change it back and it'll wake up. Good point. And yes, yeah, somebody... Um, uh, likened that cascading effect to uh, Matryoshka dolls, the little nesting Russian dolls. That's a good way of putting it. I'll remember that. <laughs> uh. Ah, yes. And I, uh, a shout out from the chemist about the chemical equation that I was displaying on the document camera. Okay. Uh, uh, he would know what that was. Is there a flex number for this class? Yes, but I don't know what it is right now. And if you haven't signed up for it already, you can't get in by yourself. But if you want to, if you want the flex credit for this session and you weren't able to sign up for it beforehand, send me an email to that effect and I'll ask our um, uh, senior secretary, who is the mistress of the flex system, uh, for us to put you in. <laughs> She'll enroll you ex post facto and then you can award yourself the credit. 
So we we have a way we have ways <laughs> to get around that. Uh, how can you get a synchronous group of students in Zoom on Canvas to film? Um, that would probably not involve OBS with the students. That's probably going to be a bridge too far for them. Um, what you can do is to just use Zoom and put um, the put Zoom into uh, gallery view and spotlight each of the students so that only they appear in gallery view. And then well, that was my question. You can, and it is Kathy. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I, I was hoping that, okay. I have a one class that's totally asynchronous. Right. And so I know that there is a way that like I have a personal email address, uh, not email, email address, a personal zoom address, but I thought there was a zoom that was in canvas. I remember they had it at, I had it at the beginning, but when I tried logging on, it's not, it's, it's not working. I, I get like a sad face. Uh, you may be referring to the confer zoom app in canvas. Yes, that's it. And it's not working for you. No. So I thought maybe because the way you showed OBS, it looked like maybe like I mean, if I was that really doesn't have much to do with OBS, but the reason almost certainly that it's not working is that there's a mismatch between the email address on your zoom account mm -hmm. and the email address that you have in canvas or selected in PeopleSoft. For that confer zoom app to work in canvas, your default email address in PeopleSoft and in canvas has to match the email address that you're using for your confer zoom account. They all have to be your district email address. Yeah, they are. Uh, you might want to check PeopleSoft on that. That's usually where the problem is. You can go into the portal in PeopleSoft and check your uh, your primary or your default email address and make sure that's set to your um, uh, district email address, your sdccd.edu email address. <coughs> so that's usually the problem. If that's not the problem in this case, then we need to look somewhere else. And we'll okay. probably need to work on that real time to figure it out. But that would be the best place for students who are asynchronous, not synchronously working together. To... Uh, that Confer Zoom app is just an alternate interface for Zoom. It doesn't give you any, really any extra properties that you don't have just with using Zoom any, any old way. Dave, neat thing, it's not that big a deal, in other words. Yes. Okay. Dave, if I might, I, I have an asynchronous class as well, and I think... Um, the advantage to the confer Zoom is you can set up hours that the student knows that you're going to be on Zoom. Yes. And and you can schedule those and it'll be uh, shown on the student's uh, side of Canvas as well. Um, and I wonder if she actually went into Canvas confer Zoom and went all the way to where you hit schedule um, or prepare. No, I, I'm pretty sure Kathy is at the point where the confer Zoom app is just not letting her do anything. Well, okay, but I was thinking uh, that is just to... not talking to her Zoom account, mm. and okay. and that's and the mis email address mismatch is the usual reason for that. But do check that, Kathy, and check Canvas as well, and make sure that your default email address in Canvas is set to your district email address. Okay, it's possible well, to have multiple email addresses associated with your Canvas account, and if your uh, your district account's probably one of them, but if it's not listed as the primary, then the confer Zoom app won't work either. That's just one of the reasons I don't particularly care for that confer Zoom app. There are too many things that can cause it not to work. And we've had, you are about the 11th person <laughs> to have that problem with that app. Don't feel bad. <laughs> but for the individual, was that, was that Bob who was talking to me? <laughs> I believe that was George. George. Okay. So George, you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
but you're saying but that i know it's for like set office hours. i like to have my separate for that but since it's synchron asynchronous it does make sense to meet there instead of my regular it doesn't matter okay it won't make okay. it any easier or any harder it depends if how you have your students finding your Zoom classes. I right. guess what uh, exactly. you could be asking. I right. give them my personal email and, they, and it's separate. So, what I mean, yeah, if you're going to have set times, it, you could do a module where you have the times and the links already pre prepared, and you could do it that way, or Confer Zoom does exactly that same thing with schedule. And that's okay. what I've been using for the last three semesters. Okay. So okay. we'll I couldn't resist spotlighting George for everyone. Oh. <laughs> George is using OBS to key himself over top. <laughs> All right. Uh, not lived in vain today. <laughs> and several other times that George has joined us for this. Nice I, work, George. I appreciate that you're the one doing the laughing this time. <laughs> it was November. I love it. Yeah, it was November our last time like this. And uh, today I uninstalled and reinstalled three times during your meeting. And the only thing I really liked be before, you know, uh, when everybody is gone except for us, I'd like to try it out before I do the class tomorrow. Sure. Sure. Okay. okay. Well, now you got me back. Sorry about that. But uh, um, outstanding. Just outstanding. Okay. Um, all right. I seem to have gotten to the bottom of the chat tool. Does anyone else have a question? Let me get back to uh, OBS here and set a screen in me. There we go. And I've cleared my uh, share. So now I know what you're seeing. <laughs> So, any other questions, comments, anything well, you'd like to share? I don't, so, I'm just thinking the you're going to have this online as just, if I put in the keywords OBS, I'll be able to find it? Uh, let me show you where it'll be. That's a very good question. Let me bring up on my shared screen over here. OBS out of the way. Oh, what am I sharing? Oh, I'm sharing my left screen. I usually share my right screen. I'm confusing myself. Excuse me. Um, let me pull up a web browser here and go to sdccdolvid.org, our on-demand video site. Let me put that in the Uh, chat tool. Hi, Eric. Come on in. I am Carol. Good, nice nice to, meet to meet you. you. So sorry about all the confusion. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I gotta. And it always like that. Okay, I just muted everyone. You can unmute yourselves. <laughs> Need. Um, and here's the on-demand video site link in chat. There we go. You can see it opposite my little alter ego icon there. I'm Boris Badenov today. And um, on that site, you'll go to Workshop Archives. That's where all of our Zoom professional development session recordings are stored. Just click on Workshop Archives, and it will be right here on the top row. <laughs> It'll be the latest one. I'm up to the 21st <laughs> of last month in getting these online. I've got two or three ahead of this one, but I'll put this one up as, um, as quickly as I possibly can, because I know this could be an issue for folks doing high flex right now. So, and just getting started with it. So I'll get this one up there as quickly as I can. And, uh, this is where they are. Just find the one you want, click on the picture, 
and you can play it you and download it full screen it great turn and see it just as well as you could if you were watching it live can i download it so i can go back and look at it again and again and again uh, it will be there indefinitely we have professional development recordings there from 2006 we never take anything off it will never go away i uh, know no, no, unfortunately under those circumstances you can't download it no. well i could uh, I record, could make it possible you can, so you can uh use your phone record the screen the media oh, yeah. and then put it on her drive on her drive in the cloud drive you it, could always it from her drive oh, i can record it on this phone <laughs> <laughs> you know i used that in 1994 i taught a class on that <laughs> yes i did yeah and if some of the students were in india the um now the uh, you can't download that you could re-record it from your screen but there's no, no real need to it will be there available to you indefinitely so yeah i like to have it watching and pause go back <laughs> well you can do that certainly you can watch now this morning for our and pause and session. play and pause to your heart's content and you can fast forward <laughs> stupid pet videos there and uh fast forward right through it and so on so you've got all those capabilities online there okay but that does make sense that if i want students to do a group presentation that it should i i should create a, a room like geo or george said in <laughs> canvas where they can go to or because someone had mentioned discord a, a Discord channel, but when I spoke to Canvas, they said that's they don't know what that is, or it's not I something they can. They don't integrate with Discord, no. Uh, there are lots of tools you could use for that. That might be a uh, might be a longer discussion that we need to have um, in a one on one meeting. But there are some really neat tools that uh, are available in can that are available in Canvas that okay. students could use for presenta recording presentations, including Canvas Studio. Um, Canvas Pronto. Uh, Pronto? Yeah, Pronto is easier for the students, much easier. Uh, I, don't like, I don't like to use it myself, but the students like it, so what can you say? <laughs> Pronto is a nice real-time chat tool, but it could be used for that. You can have up to 10 people in a Pronto chat, video chat, yes. and record that. And uh, Flipgrid is another tool that can be very useful for that. Or should I just not put it for them, let them figure it out themselves, just say they have to do a group presentation? I mean, well, I, I, no, I'd give them some, I'd give them some yes, direction on, here's an option. Now, if you know a better way to do this, you think, and you want to do it your way, that's fine. As long as it meets certain minimum requirements, fine. Uh, but I would maybe. give them some instructions. <laughs> on at least one way that they can do it using tools that are available freely available to them it won't cost them anything and that they can access uh without a lot of confusion Pronto would be a perfectly good option and of course their phones they can actually share amongst their own phones because if they're in a group they'll have their cell phone numbers and then they can do a video shared call and record that they can, they, 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 Kathy, I, the first time I did what you're suggesting, because I, when I teach, I, I like my students to teach each other. Mm -hmm. I find it makes them a lot stronger in their knowledge. And, Amen. and uh, then, then post it as, as for everybody, uh, the other groups to be able to see. Anyway, the very first time I did this, they, they gave me a bomb in an 8K, a 8K video. And <laughs> I couldn't open up, well, what the heck? <laughs> I'm going, oh my gosh, it was yeah. like, it was like, a gigabyte. <laughs> they dropped yeah. on. Had to go to the Dropbox to get it, Professor Jeff. We can't put it on Canvas. I'm going. What did you do? So yes, you do want to put parameters. Yeah, you you want to give them some options that you know will work. <laughs> okay, so flip grid. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we already have some student tutorials online that will help. Yeah. So well, let's talk about that uh, at some length. Well, I, I promised them I would give them the instructions, the syllabus, and have the canvas ready today. So, 
And I'm hoping to do this tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, can we stop recording, by the way? If it's possible? Uh, well, I like to get the questions into the recording, but if we're sure. devolving here, perhaps we could do that. Uh, okay. Does anyone else have a question about OBS or something else about online learning that might be of interest to uh, your colleagues? Uh, because someone else will have that question too. They just haven't thought to ask it yet. I didn't hear you say that students can use OBS. Yes, certainly. Okay. It's a free. It's a free it's download. Completely free. Uh, it would be a. They would. It would have to be an unusual student, one who's very interested in in video production and so on, to do that. It would be unrealistic to expect your average student to use OBS. I think. Um, it's you have to be highly motivated and willing to spend some time on it. The uh, tools like Canvas Studio or Pronto or Flipgrid are a lot less or a lot lighter in terms of cognitive weight <laughs> in learning to use them and getting something useful out of them. Okay. Well, anyway, I just got the buck. Like as soon as my class is over at 11, 10, I buckled down to try and get this done and, gotcha. and, and Zoom would, didn't show up. To tell you the truth, probably the easiest thing for them to use is Zoom. Um, and they can get their own Zoom, free Zoom accounts, who is practically the only um, limitation to those, the only real limitation is the 40 minute time limit on a meeting and you probably don't want them creating no. presentations that are more than 40 minutes long anyway. <laughs> So they could do this through Zoom. They already know a lot about Zoom from just attending your Zoom class meetings. And it's just a slight extra um, um, step from there to uh, using Zoom to create their presentations and record them. Oh, so I could just suggest that they get their own Zoom account instead of me trying to find a way to get Zoom into my... They can just get their own. And that's something we could probably create a tutorial for. I don't think we have... We, we have a series... We have a bunch of different tutorials that have elements of what they need to do in them. Mm -hmm. But it would be perfectly possible to create a Zoom tutorial specifically for students showing them how to... Acquire a Zoom a free Zoom account. Okay. Um, join a one of them. Start a Zoom meeting, and the others join. Go into gallery view. Each of them speak, and then share screen. And one of them have any document, any PowerPoint slides or visual aids they're going to use, if any, um, on their uh, on a computer, and have one of them share the screen at the appropriate time, and so on. So oh, I can demonstrate it during my office hour, because I do have synchronous office hours once a week. Yes. OK. Oh, yeah, that's much easier to write. Then I can get this done. All right. Does that help? That helps. Thank you. All I was trying right, to make good. as little work as well. Thank you, everyone. I'm sorry I missed. I, this is the one I really, really wanted to watch. And I said, no, I got to finish this, or I'll be turning this in at midnight. And the, the one, one thing before you go, Kathy, yes. is that I, I know that confer Zoom seems like it might be difficult. I, I didn't know, Dave, that when I use confer Zoom in Canvas that I'm using my own account. And I, I'm pretty yes, sure you are. I'm I, But I'm using GJSOP at SDCCD, right? Right. You are I'm using not, your confer uh, Zoom. Account. You're using, using your confer personal. Zoom account. Yeah, but I'm not using my personal uh, Zoom account. I'm no. using my... No. Right, I'm using my confer Zoom to confer Canvas Zoom account. account. Right, and uh, and if you go go to it, Kathy, you'll see on the far right side that there's an event uh, where you can actually put students into a to a group, and mm -hmm. then set up a time for them to have their Zoom uh, in in your ask any. Now we have. I'll give anybody who's left a chance to ask another question about OBS or about another aspect of online learning that you came to hoping to be able to ask a question about.
Well, I better get this done. So bye. Thank you. Okay. Good luck with that, Kathy. Adam, are you there? He's asking you. Was yeah, he asking wasn't me? asking me specifically, but he was asking. Uh, <laughs> no, I, you know, thank, thank you for your, uh, your effort to include me. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm good, Dave. Um, good. I think All I'm right. going to take off at this point. Fantastic. Uh, good luck. I hope you give OBS a try. And the sooner I the will. better, <laughs> because it does, this is what you call perishable knowledge. Though I will have the recording up pretty soon that you can refer back to. All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks Take for care. coming today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Anybody else? I think it's just me and Eric. It does appear so. Oh, yeah, there's two of you. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> there's, yeah. Two, there's one other person. But yeah, this is two Georges and Eric. Got and it. And you guys are welcome to criticize, but if you can stop the recording, what I want to do is uh, see what happens when I run a class. Sure. Uh, okay, George, let me just get it in the recording. You are doing tremendous work here. That is a beautiful uh, image of your document camera and you uh, shared through OBS and Zoom. Nice work. That's what we were hoping to see. Have a great uh, evening, and I hope to see you again soon. You will. Great. Bye-bye.